Now I've covered all of the world obtained plants in these videos. I've got nine of them left. All of the store bought plants from Crazy Dave's Twiddy Dinkies, which is still a stupid name, but whatever. These are all of the upgrade plants, plus the imitator. I, for one, am not a big fan of the upgrade plant concept, where you plant it on another, as it requires you to pick both these plants, although at least you get a high amount of seed slots to compensate for this. So therefore, I don't really use upgrade plants all that much. Nevertheless, here is my ranking of all of the store bought plants. I'm Ace from Gold Ninja Vlogspot, and here is my ranking of all of the plants from the Twitty Dinkies. P.S. Check out my Instagram for the spiciest PVZ memes and updates. The bottom spot is, of course, Gold Magnet. Probably the easiest ranking in the history of the channel, because who the hell would need to water down a magnet room so it attracts coins instead of buckets and various other metal objects to help kill zombies? The answer is... Nobody. Maybe it's because I play on iPhone and unless you're missing like seven fingers, tapping on coins is easier than playing a White Stripe song on drums. For PC it's a little bit trickier as you need to click them with your mouse, but let's be honest, it's hardly insane aquarium. You should be able to keep up with the coin output with no problem at all. Overall, don't bother with this plant, it's just a waste of time and will be more of a hindrance than help. Only buy it when you have every other plant. Number 8 is the Imitator. Now this low ranking kind of sucks because I really like the idea of this plant. And given the high seed slot count, there's a decent amount of room to use them. There are several great ideas for imitations, such as Doom Shrimp and Marigold. But unfortunately, you can't use them to emulate upgrade plants, which is a crying shame as they recharge the patient and drives. Also, unlike in the second game, he can be eaten while transforming, so you can't really use him to put down a last minute instant use or defensive plant. Maybe there's some good strategies with him that I haven't discovered, but the fact you can't use him with upgrade plants actually does hold him back quite a lot, and therefore he is relegated to the number 8 spot. 7 is Cobb Cannon. I can see this being a questionable ranking due to the plant's sheer power, however his setup is so damn frustrating and unnecessarily difficult. You need to plant him on not one, not three, but two kernel pots. He's clearly designed for use in roof levels due to being an upgrade of the kernel, and given his high sun cost and complicated setup, good luck using him in a nighttime stage. His shots are as powerful as an instant kill, but takes over half a minute to reload, and doesn't feel necessary when there aren't many zombies. This is where survival and last stand come in. The guy is super useful in these levels and can clear a large area out. He's kind of like a multi-use cherry bomb, although the ludicrously complicated setup makes him vastly inferior in my opinion, and is a good idea that could have been executed just a bit better. What also doesn't help is that he's the most expensive plant from Twitty Dinkies, literally twice as much as the second most expensive plant, Wintermelon. Number 6 is the Gloom Shroom. This ranking is likely to be the biggest storm in the smallest teacup, blah blah blah, Shagamars ranked it high, blah blah, easy survival cheese, blah. But the reason I'm not too keen on him is because I've never really been a fan of melee plants with a weak damage output, although he's a fair bit better than the fat beat from the second game. And with appropriate protection from the pumpkin, or the garlic if you're a little less on the sane side, he can be quite the madness. I say that, but using an array of gloom shrooms in the second and fourth lanes and using garlic to divert them in the lanes is actually a great strategy for last stand. However, the fact he's a mushroom and therefore difficult to use in day levels kind of restricts him. At least the gold magnet doesn't need the coffee bean to function. Overall, the plant is definitely usable and effective, but a lot of the time, I just prefer to use a fume shroom. Slap bang in the middle of the list is a cattail. Maybe PVZ composer Laura Shikihara's favourite plant, but unfortunately that doesn't amount to a whole lot. The feline plant is still a pretty great addition to the game, given that you can place them in the water to pretty much aim by the hell out of any zombie on any lane. And it works as a somewhat cost effective support plant, as instead of 6 pieces or whatever, you can just use this guy. The fact he pops balloons is also a nice touch. Unfortunately, that's pretty hard to do, as in the time will take to amass enough sun in the fog world, you could complete a 200 piece jigsaw puzzle. That is also an issue in general. You can only use him in two worlds as he's a water plant. At least Gloom Shroom can be used in day levels if you use a coffee bean, but you can't really get around that with a cattail. Still, pretty solid plant. Into the upper band of the list, and first up is the Twin Sunflower. I was considering her, or them in this case, for a high spot given producing more sun is very important for other plants, especially certain upgrade plants, but I think her slow recharge hinders her quite a bit. Simply put, if you could use her a bit more often, she'd be a high tier plant. Her sun cost is also a bit excessive, given she basically costs 200 sun, although the trade off is usually worth it in the end. However, like I mentioned, she is a great choice for whenever you want to use expensive plants, given she's the most potent out of the game's three sun producers. 
Number three is Spy Clock. Theoretically, the tankiest plant the game has to offer, the Numb Plant can survive nine smashes from Gargantuas or Zombonis. Also, it only costs 125 sun. Hey, cool. Sure, it's more like 225 sun when you factor in spike weed. Although, due to the mechanics of sun production, spending 100 and then 125 sun is generally easier than spending 225 sun all at once. He's enough to kill a regular zombie on his own, and is a great pick for Bob said Bonanza due to the amount of zombonies appearing in that level. Oh god, that gave me awful flashbacks because I hate that mini game. As with the spike weed, his main disadvantage is that he can't be used on the roof. But outside of that, he's a great pick, and if you pair him up with a stone plant, he gets even better. Number 2 is Gatling Pig. While this did lead to the creation of one of the most control out of window worthy abilities in the Garden Warfare series, the original Gatling absolutely oozes demolition and is a fan favourite. Sure, using him costs more than just using two repeaters, but it saves space massively. And I know I use a similar argument to explain why I dislike the three repeater, but I would generally prefer a high damage output over using multi lane plants. Also, since you have to use Repeater anyway in order to use Gatling P, you might as well just upgrade at least one of them at some point. Also, if you use them with Torchwood, you can cause absolute carnage. Plus you get bonus splash damage. Also, since he's the first plant the Crazy Dave sells, he doesn't cost a lot, so he's pretty accessible early on. And taking the crown is the Winter Melon. Some might argue this is a predictable placement, some might say otherwise, but Melon Pole was already a pretty insane plant, so if you take that and add a chilling effect, you can batter wave after wave of the undead. While it cumulatively costs 500 sun, like I explained before with the spy rock, one at a time system makes him easier to use, and you don't just have to use 500 sun all at once in order to plant him. Just get the OG melon down first, and then Mr. Blue Pole when you get 200 again. While fire zombies aren't a thing in this game, you can still use his lob shot nature to get around zombies such as screen door and ladder zombies, and his chilling nature shines against those with speed, such as football zombies. Overall, he's worth his $10,000 cost in Crazy Dave Bucks, and definitely one of the best plants in the game. Welp, that's it for this series, what would you like to see next? Leave a comment, like the video, subscribe if you're new, and check out the others in the series if you haven't already. I'm GMVS, thanks for watching.